You have probably heard of the, the story of the, um, of the past nations, a man, he was uh, an abid and a salih, he was a righteous man and a worshipper of Allah. And then there were three brothers who wanted to go on a journey, so they thought, and they had a sister, they thought the best place was to leave their sister with this man, who was a, a worshipper and no, known for his righteousness. So they asked him and he said, I can't leave her with me. So they built her a place next to him, a, a shelter, and she would stay in that room, never leaving. So they left on their journey and they went out for a, over a year. So in the beginning, the, he, the shaitan came to him and, he's, and he told, tells him something that's possibly correct. He said, you know, haram, the lady's alone and, you know, she may feel sick and she, she has no one to feed her. So the man, every time he cooked for himself, he started to cook a little bit more. Now we're talking about something good intention so far. He'd cook a little bit more and he would bring the food and leave it on her doorstep. Knock the door and leave. He doesn't want now to, to engage in conversation or anything. Just knock the door, he would leave. So he would do that for a while. Then the shaitan came to him again and he said, you know, why don't you wait until she takes the food so that no strange person sees her taking the food. They might become interested in her or they might talk to her. So then he would stay until she would take the food. So he would say something to her and so on and so forth. So what happens then? The barriers start started to break and this is something that happens a lot in MSAs it happens in the Muslim workplace it happens even within like you find in the committees within the masjid first like I said there's a, there's a, a great distance between the man and the woman and then after a while it becomes you know the giggling and, and joking and, and this and that because the barriers eventually break so then he starts he said, you know, maybe she's you know, lonely and, and, and homesick. So he would start to engage in, in chit-chat, small talk. And after a while, the small talk came, became where he would go inside and he would eat. And in, as you know, the story in the end, he fell into zina with this person. And she became pregnant. And she even gave birth. So then he became afraid that he will be discovered. I and mean, he's known as the, the righteous man and the worshiper of Allah. So he killed both of them and he buried them. And after about a year and a half or so, the, the brothers returned and he told them, Allah, your sister, she fell ill and she died. And this was the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal and she was buried and so on. So then they believed him because he was a righteous man and they went away. And the shaitan kept coming to them in their dreams and kept telling them that this man killed her and he buried her in a certain place. So they went and they dug up that place and they found her buried with an infant and a child. So they knew. And they went to the Sultan, the man in charge, and he was tried and he was now tied awaiting his punishment. So while he was awaiting his punishment, the shaitan came to him in the form of a human and he said, do you know me? The man said, I don't know you. He said, I'm the one who tricked you into this from the beginning. Because see, shaitan, he doesn't come to you and say, uh, why don't you kill this person? Or why don't you performs and he starts with something simple no one would fall for it if he comes and says why don't you kill the person so why don't you go insult him like he insulted you the other day or now he's insulting you too much why don't you hit him back or eventually it leads to that so he comes to you with something small first so here the shaitan said I'm the one who he started all this for you and if you want out there's one way I'll show you you can come out of all this mess and that you prostrate to me you make one sajda to me and this man who was a righteous man and a worshipper of Allah Azza wa Jal, he wanted to be freed from this embarrassing situation. So he made the sujood for the shaitan. And when he did that, the shaitan ran away saying, Inni akhafu Allah Rabbil Alameen. I am afraid of Allah, Lord of the worlds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran, كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان كفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين. That the example of the shaitan, when he told to the man, he said to the man, Ikfur, this, يعني, become a kafir. فلما كفر, when he became a kafir, he said, I am innocent from what you do. I am afraid of Allah. I fear Allah, the Lord of the world. So this is how the shaitan slowly brings things. And this is how when the barriers break, it starts off with something simple, something innocent. And then it eventually leads to something that is haram. So what we want to say is that it is... unnatural and unrealistic to assume that there is that nothing will happen between men and women 
Because Allah Azza wa has put a natural tension between men and women. So to say that we can be friends and it can be an innocent relationship, it's really unrealistic. The Prophet ﷺ told us in Bukhari, I'm not leaving behind any fitna, meaning any temptation, more, more harmful to men than women. So no temptation is stronger for the man than a woman. So how can you have a hadith like this that tells you there's nothing, no stronger temptation, and then you say, well, we can be friends and nothing will happen. It's unrealistic to expect that. And uh, a one Muslim man came to me one time, he said, I have female Muslim friends. And one time we spent the night in a room studying and wallahi nothing happened and we didn't even think of anything i studied and she studied and, and she like late a.m she left and i remained and nothing happened so he's asking so why is it then prohibited between men and women to be to be together in close proximity and of course the answer is very simple and if because it happened to in your case nothing bad happened it doesn't mean you should make it permissible for everyone else this is a specific case you don't go from the specific to the general, you go from the general to the specific. So, it's not natural to, accept, to ex expect that you can be friends with a woman and nothing will happen. That may, be, that may happen in one or two different scenarios, but do we make that a general rule for people? Do we say, oh, brother so-and-so, nothing happened, he spent the night, so everybody go ahead, spend the night. We don't do that. 